Hi, Angela Wolf here. Today I have a fun project. It is just a simple envelope bag. Who doesn't need that to go with their wrap dress, right? So you could use a lot of different fabrics on this, but this is the idea. You really don't need a pattern. All you have to do is open up an envelope, but here you go, just for <laughs> sake. This is what it looks like. And this is what the end, I lined it and added a little button here. So the fabric I'm using here is wax canvas. Another great one is faux leather. But I wanted you to just take a look at this. I had pieces of wax canvas left from another project and I hated to throw it out. So I pieced it together, did some top stitching and made the bag. So let's take a look at this pattern. So basically, like I said, it's just like an envelope. This folds in, that folds up, and then this closes. This is where you're gonna sew on a button, and this is where you're gonna sew on a buttonhole. I've already cut out the pieces, but let me just mention a little bit about this fabric. If you're gonna use a faux leather, that's different, but wax canvas, the more you mess with it, the softer it gets, and it ends up getting all of these weird lines on it, which is part of the look. So find something like a canvas, a faux leather, anything like that would work well. You could even use a clear vinyl, that would be kind of cute. So I've already cut out the pattern, and on here, I'm gonna go ahead and mark so you can see it. This is where my button's gonna go. Wax canvas is really slippery, by the way. And don't use your iron on it. <laughs> Just try it once and then you'll laugh and tell me, yeah. All right, and then this is where the buttonhole goes. And I'm just gonna chop that in, just so I can see it. So I've cut out the canvas. I've also cut out some lining. This one has sparkles, and by the way, I've been wearing it all day, so the sparkles come off. <laughs> Might be an effect on the top. So you're gonna take this and with right sides together, we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew all the way around. Before I do that though, I just wanna mention for the lining, on this one here I used a satin, which was very slippery. For your first project, you might wanna consider using a cotton, which is what this is, or like this. It won't slide around as much, so just a little bit more sewing success. All right, there's really nothing special for stitching this uh, canvas. It's just like stitching real canvas. What you'll wanna do though is change your stitch length to a 3.0 and use a denim jean needle, okay? And I just wanna make sure, oh, I marked both sides. Right sides together. <laughs> I didn't realize I already marked that other side, so don't get confused. All right, and this is, because I'm lining it, I need to leave myself a place to open this up. So I'm just gonna start over here. Thread-wise, you can use whatever you want. This is just universal polyester thread. Do a little back stitch, got my stitch length, and then I'm gonna just go down to each corner and stitch. You don't need to watch this whole part, but I just wanna give you a few tips on where to cut and trim the edges. All the way down to here. I'm using about a half an inch seam allowance. It seems to work really well for this. All the way around. Get my thread out of the way here. This is the bottom half that will be folded up. Now you'll notice the canvas is having absolutely no problem going through the machine. If you have any problems at all, and I'm gonna stop right here because I wanna just show you from the other side. If you have any problems with your fabric sliding around, what you wanna do is sew with the canvas side up. And I'm just gonna do that for a few minutes just to show you the difference here. You can see actually a little bit better too. And I'll start on that one side where the little opening is. Go down and over. And I'm just gonna grab my chalk. I've got one more little tip for you. When you get to these corners to make sure that they all match, just give yourself little guidelines like this. And the canvas is hard. Don't use something that will be permanent. So I'm giving myself a guide there and here and here, just to show you this. Now, on your machine, you can always set it where the knee lifter or this, the foot will automatically go up when you get to a corner. That's kind of helpful, makes it go a little faster. There we go, and let's turn it and go. 
is a great project for beginners. While I'm doing this, I will mention, for those of you that like to embellish fabric, you might consider couching maybe a cotton or something on the outside. You could have a lot of fun with this. And of course, we all love embroidery. All right, I think you're getting the idea. Down to this side, and we're just about finished. Well, I might as well just finish it off. One from one side, one from the other. I do think, though, you can see the sewing on this side a little bit better. All right, and back here. All right. You have to trim some of these seam allowances before you turn this right side out. And let me just show you where. Use sharp scissors. So every corner that's an in corner like this, you need to trim right to that point, but not through the fabric, just right to that point. On these outer edges, you're gonna trim just like a triangle. Just like that. If you wanna shorten your seam allowances a little bit more to maybe a quarter of an inch, feel free, but you don't have to. The big part though is that when you turn this, that you can turn these little right sides out. And the tip, one little tip about the tip is if you're trying to make a corner here, you've seen me do this in garments, just go down. And what I'm gonna do is just go straight across with a back stitch, giving myself just a couple stitches at that tip. And that way when I turn it right side out, it will actually be a point. You might have seen me do that on jackets. So there's that. And you do that all the way around. You go in this little hole right here and flip it right side out, which I've already done over here. I'm just gonna set that to the side. So I've already turned this right side out. And I was able to tuck in that little side here. And then I changed to a top stitching all the way around. I'm just gonna do one more little layer of this top stitching. I don't think you needed to see that, but I just wanna show you, if you use the triple stitch, it gives a really good decorative stitch on here and change your stitch length to a 4.0. I'm using a contrasting thread here and I'm just gonna stitch right along here so you can see it and then I can rip it out later, but at least you'll see. The needle's in the far left position. If you want it in a different place, all you have to do is adjust the width to go to the center position this down and you should be able to see this cream colored thread on here really really well that's pretty cool it looks almost like a denim thread which you could use that too but this gives a good look all right so how do we put this bag together I've already marked my button so I'm gonna sew on a button here. And I have a few different buttons. I brought just a handful, some big, some small. It just depends how big your buttonhole is gonna go. So this would go here and I would sew this on now. But first I wanna show you a couple of other things. When you fold this up, it's gonna fold in and in and flip like this. You can either put snaps or stitch right here. So let me just show you how easy this is. There's a stitch on here under the buttonholes. That's, it's like a bar tack. The other thing though, is you could just go, and for those of you that don't have this on your machine, I'll just go back. Use a zigzag stitch, leave the width 3.5 or 4.0, and change the length to 0.1. That's barely moving, kind of like a bar tack. All right, so hold this in place. I'll leave this open so you can see, and I'll try to keep my hand out of the way. I'm just gonna slide this under. I'm holding this in place. I'm not letting go so it's not twisting. Put this down and it will just go back and forth and do a stitch, which will keep this in place. All right, here we have and it stayed. I'm using the contrasting threads so you can see. So there you go, that's stuck there. Let's do the other side real quick. 
hold this in place. Now, you could turn this inside out and stitch this closed if you want to. It, it's up to you, but this is just an easy way to do it. So hold your hand in place. You could use clips too if you wanted to hold this, but don't use pins. If you use pins in this wax canvas, you'll see the piercings. You'll know that if you have to rip out any stitches. Just do a few stitches and let's see what we've got here. All right, there we go. Now the next thing you'll wanna do, you would have already sewn your button on by the way. This button's pretty big, I'm just gonna sew it on by hand, but you could sew it on by machine. Now let's, what about the buttonhole? Well, I could sew a buttonhole, but the buttonhole foot will not do a buttonhole this big. So let me show you something that you might have on your machine. Let's go to the embroidery section. And yes, you can actually embroider buttonholes. So let me just find it on here. There we go. So there's a few different types. I just use something ba basic, but there's a couple of things you need to know. When you choose one of these, there are three different sizes. That thing's huge. <laughs> it would take up the whole bag. So you can hit medium or small to make it smaller. Go ahead and click set. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to float my bag so I can do this buttonhole. So I need to flip this around and I'm just gonna click rotate, move it up and down and click okay. So what I have here, this is just tearaway, sticky back tearaway stabilizer. I've already placed it in the hoop. You could use any size hoop for this because it's a very small buttonhole. I've scored the paper, you pull this back and you will take this and set it right on top of here. And that will stick in place. This is not set up for embroidery right now so I'm just showing the, you these steps. I would go ahead and embroider this and here are three different examples of some of these buttonholes. They're pretty large. It'll fit in there. So let's go back up here and compare. This is the bag that's finished. This was kind of a fun button too. So here you go. Open this up. And one more thing about the buttonholes, when you go to open these up, I'm just gonna puncture it just a little bit so you can see this. Even if your buttonhole's huge and you're, you only need this much space to get your button through, don't open the whole buttonhole. Just a little tip there so it doesn't get all stretched out. So you can see on this one here, I did not open this all the way. And now when I close it, it won't stretch out. So that's how simple it is to make an envelope bag. Have fun with this one, you could really decorate